Uh, I hope, I think I have about um, 10, 10 of you here. It's uh, 12.07. So uh, I'm hoping the guys, to, the rest of the guys will join in soon. At least we can get about 20 going, then we can get started. But for now, um, let me show you guys uh, the uh, my lab, my network lab setup. I call it my workbench, mostly for either tutorial sessions or for uh, lab demos and other presentations. So let me just give you a close eye view of how the place is set up. Then you can see how much effort it goes into it. I'm going to switch the video to uh, the co host device. So, at least you guys can watch that. If you can see that, let me know or just type something. Okay, can you guys see the co-host, which is Komi's iPhone? If you can, just type yes. Thumbs up, anything. Can you see Komi's iPhone? It's the co-host. Okay, great. All right, so let me show you the uh, my lab setup. So at least you have a clear view of what goes into it within my lab. So you got your um, this is the, the desk over here. The cable and stuff. As you can see, uh, my laptop and its drawer monitors. And then the exciting part is, okay, you also got the stuff over here. For today's uh, test, you have your APs. They come in different, uh, we'll get to that later. And then your termination tools that you have if you have to do some termination. And then from here, let's move on to um, uh, my, uh, my rack, my network rack at least. Uh, let's see if you can get some light in here. So this is my, this is the cover here. So we can uh, just open. And this is the inside of my network lab. Uh, it has quite a number of stuff from uh, ranging from the routers, your VPN routers at the top over there, your fiber optic modems. White one over there is the fiber optic modem. That's what brings the implant to, uh, into the house from uh, Vodafone's network. And then you have the uh, POE switch down there, the one blinking light. And then my uh, controller, my, my uh, software defined network controller. This helps me, this device here helps me manage uh, my entire network from anywhere in the world. As long as I have internet, I can control the entire, uh, my entire home network from anywhere in the world. That's the controller you can read, you can read. It says uh, the formatter hardware controller. I hope you can see that. Hope you can. Okay, and then you move on to your patch panels. Uh, these are the coupling patch panels. They're quite expensive as compared to traditional ones. And then you have your Cisco routers. This is for routers down here. Let me get this out of the way. You can just 
Cisco routers or branch offices come by or what you call uh, uh, redundancy purposes in case the main network fails, the Cisco will take over. And then you have your Cisco switches. Um, another AT over here. That fights at an access point. And then my server, my NAS server is over there. This is what handles a number of my um, applications, uh, systems from directory services to uh, controller modules for your home, automations, or what have you. And number of hard drives, just in case uh, any one of them fails, I can be able to replace them. So you got quite a number of stuff. Anyway, this happens to be my network right? I have a whole network right? that I manage uh, from home. Okay. All right. So That's that should be it. Now let's move back to the uh, the test lab. And then I'll switch over to um, the main um, network. Also the net, the main uh, presentation. Okay, so you guys can see this, right? You can see the test bed, right? The workbench or whatever. Can you see it? Yes, you can see this, right? Yes, if you can see it. No, if you can't see it, can you see this? The table that houses the, okay, great. All right, so that's the main uh, presentation. So you guess you can tell from what I've just showed you, there's a lot that goes in into my, into setting up my network. There are still 10 students here. There's gotta be a lot more than 10. What's going on with the rest of the class? After midterm, they're having fun, right? It's always the same with students. Anyways, um, so to get you started with today's uh, topic, this is I, I'm, I'm I'm not skipping the high speed, but I want to move on to the uh, the wireless. If you were to go back to the uh, course page, uh, I, so you'd have high speed and then wireless. I'm focusing on the wireless over here today, and then next would be the high speed, and then from there we'll move on down. Okay, so the video's already here. But anyways, 
So uh, that should be your uh, starting point. Okay, so let me move back down to the environment. <clears throat> so if you look in the table here, you can see a number of stuff. Uh, they're mostly um, uh, devices that relate to wireless LANs. Uh, wireless LANs are mostly run um, from wireless, sorry, from access point or wireless access point. What is, there's nothing like a wireless access point. It's supposed to be an access point. An access point is wireless, basically. So if you just add wireless to it, it becomes redundant. Okay, so then we have uh, a couple of access points over here that are doing like, like test demos. I want us to go to yeah, hold, hold that for them to get made. These ones are made by Ubiquiti. Ubiquiti is a very popular um, a vendor when it comes to AP manufacturing. So it's a good vendor. A lot of um, uh, enterprise systems use them a lot because they have robust and very uh, uh, reliable devices. You just you, you just basically grab them and you look at the design. You can tell it's quite solid. It's very solid made. Okay. Now they come like I said. They come in different shapes. This one happens to be uh, the rectangular ones, uh, mostly for uh, outdoor implementation. You can even use it for indoor as well. It all depends on. Uh, what you want to what you want to set up, what kind of wireless you want to set up, and and your budget. Okay, uh, they have some in the in the round shape ones, or the oval shape ones. They have some in a rectangular, sorry, in a square shape design. Some of them are hexagon shapes. What have you? Quite a number of shapes, a number of designs, and the way some of these APs are built. Okay, but here we have the direct similar ones. Uh, I mostly use it for outdoor installation. You can also you can also use it for indoor, but generally mostly for outdoor. If you want to set up an outdoor uh, Wi-Fi, uh, maybe extension, then you could use this one to do the job. Uh, if you just want to have an indoor, have your indoor network or an indoor coverage, you can also do that same thing. It doesn't really matter. So they both built for outdoor implementation and and an indoor uh, deployments. So you do have uh, various environments that you can implement some of these uh, devices. Anyway, so I got this tool here. Uh, I, ha I have so many of them actually. This, that used to be one of my biggest um, uh, uh, device that clients request for on a regular basis when they. They need me to set up um, a wireless network for them. So they request for some of these. So it's going to be a very robust. The key thing is they're very robust. So they expect to use it a lot. Uh, this one here has got the antenna built into it. So the antenna can be built into the board and it's all covered up. So it's all covered up inside this. I think if you open this up, you see them either on this side and this side. You know, and then some of them are uh, smaller, smaller uh, modules built into it. But they all enhance with the, uh, the antenna that's housed within the AP for your wireless deployment. And then you do have your uh, mountain brackets, uh, holders or bracket holes. You know. And then you do have your LEDs at the the back over there to show you uh, the signaling, the signal rate, how uh, good the signal is, and other properties that are, are indicated within the device uh, installation. Okay, now the back end of it is where the cable actually goes into. So it has this cover here, the clips by the bottom of it, and you can open it. And then you should be able to see two ports. There's a main and then uh, a secondary. So the main port is this one here. 
this way you connect uh, your power uh, the device actually powers this AC too I'll show you that in a minute okay and the secondary is what you can use to extend this particular device uh, Wi-Fi connectivity so assuming you have a, 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 a camera a CCT camera and you want to connect it uh, at a remote location you can use a secondary port to power up that um, um, CCT camera whereas the main goes to your uh, uh, POD uh, device or your car device you know, so as a, a reset button so you can reset just in case uh, you want to reconfigure it and set up or whatever that's a reset button over there okay so now uh, the this is the POE that powers this AT this is the POE what you call the power over ethernet so when you look at it you see um, the POE which is power over ethernet POE and this is the cable that actually goes all the way to the main interface of the oh, both port into this port over here. Okay, so this line here you go with this and power this device at the main port right there. Okay, and then the second interface is the LAN port. This is what goes directly into the, the network that we need to pick up kind of feed. That means to pick up maybe a, a network setting from. So in this scenario here, I have this connected to my laptop directly. Uh, ideally, you connect this to your, once you set up, you connect this to your local area network, your switch for the most part. So if you have a switch in the network, this cable will go directly into it. But for test environment, I've connected this LAN cable, the LAN port, to my laptop. So we can go inside this right here and then see what kind of settings it has if you want to set it up. So generally how to basically set up an access point to um, uh, to perform specific tasks uh, to be able to, 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 to address your wireless implementation needs we're going to. Okay, so this will get you that connectivity. All right, and this obviously powers this drive. The LAN interface provides the IP network that is needed to enhance or to, to access this and be able to perform the AP. Okay, so that and then the other kind of this is the power cable. I want to go plug this. So currently, I have the POE cable here plugged in, and the other end is right over here. So this is the other end over here. I'm going to plug it into the the main interface. So the main interface over here. So where's the main interface? Okay, so it's now sorry, second command in the main. Okay, so it's in the main. So from here on the POE. So the cable goes all the way around and it comes to connect to this. Okay. Yeah, so now I got it in there. Yes, I'm looking at the camera and that's the reason why I was plugging into secondary. But thanks for the uh finding that out. Okay. Okay, so now I came there. Cable is up. Now I just okay. The other end, the line interface is all the way to my laptop. It goes all the way. And connect to my laptop. Okay, so this is set up. Now uh, it, it's set up. Now let's try to power the um, POE. Let's plug it in there. Plug it to the power outlet so it can show uh, power coming to this, this device over here. Okay, so currently, if you look at the, uh, the light, it's pretty much right. There's nothing going on over here. There's no, it's not on. So I'm gonna go power it up and see what happens. So if you keep, keep an eye on it, while well, I plug it in to the power out.
Look at you see it turning on. The closer I look, you see it kind of green. See that? Power is on. Power is on. And then the line is connected. Tell me that the line connectivity. The line connectivity. So it's yeah, it's powered up over there. So the first two lights are on the power, first one is power, the second one is line, and then the second port is the second port, the second secondary interface. Okay, but the first two are on, so you have an activity. Great. Now let me move on to the second AP, which is this one here. Now those ones here have got their antennas built thinner. These are the antennas. So this takeaway here that I've done, move to the side for a second. So these are the, to the same ubiquitous devices. Right, these are the antennas. So they have the connection point ports that gets screwed onto this. So these are the antennas. They have the gains on it, the power gains to propagate wireless or the radio waves that is needed to pick up a transmission. So you plug it in, you just screw it on. Screw it on. And then you do have your AP. Process points. You also have the same interface with the back for the connectivity, two ports. Okay, open it by just clicking on this and let's open them up. So the same, the same design, both main and secondary. So yeah, so that's the main and secondary. So the same thing, they are the same, they all go to the same uh, design, but it's the same company, so they have that. Okay, so, so this one is, the antennas are built inside. This one, the antennas are built outside. You have to, the, the outside, you can see them. Now, this ones are much powerful than this because the fact they have high gain antennas and two of them for dual or duplex uh, transmission, one for receiving and one for transmitting. So it's pretty powerful, uh, very robust for really robust, uh, rugged environment like campuses, university campuses, uh, 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 huge industrial environments, these devices are very, very effective for those, for those implementations or deployments. Okay, well, we're gonna focus on this one for today. Anyway, the same firmware that goes on that that inside with four drums, in terms of the operating system that runs on them, the same thing, no difference. Those that wanna have a high, Again, because of the internal antenna built into it. Okay. All right. So let's move. Let's settle with this, and now we can work on this one. Okay. So that side is gone. Uh, now the cable that I use are pre-terminated cables. The pre-terminated cables. Okay. So but if you don't have a pre-terminated cable, you can just uh, connect a new one. So terminate. Um, uh, where is it? You can just go ahead and grab your own um, two step pack cable. Okay, two step pack cables. Yeah, and then terminate it yourself. You know, hook up your, this is why you use the tools for terminus is a stripper. This is a cable stripper. I bet uh, you're not going to see a lot of these in town because these are. More of the American specs, so you're not going to see a lot of these in town. What you're going to be seeing in Ghana, for the most part, in Africa, for the most part, are the uh, the crappy ones. The I call them the crappy ones because they are made by China. You know, but those ones are very robust, uh, very very uh, industrial grade. It has the uh, the port the uh, the ports where you you basically um, input your cable. So the cables in there and then you release it and then with that it with that it's stripping for you so you tell you what kind of uh, uh 
can I be using the two holes, one for coaxial and one for uh, mostly twisted type cables? So if you go through UCSTP, NIUTP, and then these are for the coaxial. This is the coaxial port, and this is the twisted type ports. So this is a twisted type cable. It has to go into this port, the first one. First part on this, release it, and then turn it around. And it's fixed with the jacket for you. Why? The jacket just comes right off. And then you have your twisted type cable. All eight of them. You got four sections of twisted pair with the separator or the uh, what you call the uh, uh, strength member, either a rope or just a by dividing. Yep, so you can just terminate, uh, strip this off, set up a standard, helical standard, and then take the RG45, get up to it, and then print it with the right printing tools. Okay. So that's what you got with this. I think I have my printing tool over here. This is my printing tool. Another high grade printing tool, very robust by clean tools, efficient. So you just, uh, the expense is $45. This is uh, $35, $45. Quite expensive, they're, but they're professional grade. They're cheaper ones, I mean, you can get a full. Uh, 55 CDs and what have you. But it, when it gets to the same level, you have to buy the, you have to invest in the proper tools, the high end commercial grade tools, just like that right now. But don't deal with these kind of grade for the entry level stuff anymore. Okay, it's up to the standard at my level. Okay, so and then once you're done, you can even test this uh, cable with your testers. Okay, test them out. See if they're working properly with the, uh, the receiver and the transmitter or the remote device. These are your testing tools or your cables that you've cleaned or terminated. That's it. Great. Now let's settle with uh, what we got here and try to set up this wireless AP because that's what today's topic is about. So currently, my power modules are on, the line interface is also on. That's great. Now, by default, these devices comes with a, uh, uh, which, a browser interface to, to allow you to be able to access the operating system and be able to do your configurations on it. Okay. And then the IP address for that web browser interface is 192, the default IP address is 192.168.1.20. And that applies to all of the ubiquity uh, APs. That's their logo. BPC APs all have for that default uh, IP address for their APs. Okay. Now the the LAN cable from the EOE. Okay, that goes into my uh, my laptop. Has to be on the same network, that same IP subnet, for me to be able to access it. So well, let's go and configure. Because so currently, if I were to try to access the uh, the AP. I wouldn't have connectivity because I've not configured mine. So open your DOS prompt and then um, and then let's go to my and see if you can do a ping. So ping 192.168.1.20. You would notice that it wouldn't go through because my machine here is not on the same subnet as the AP yet. So now how do you how do you figure how do you do that? To make sure to set up your laptop to be on the same subnet as the AP that you're trying to configure, you go to your network interface. So let's minimize this and then go to your network interface by going to you know your network and internet places. Go to your Ethernet adapter and then go to change adapter options. And you should 